one thing that you know I think about is that you know once the five men were killed, um, it would have made sense just to to pack up. You know, from I guess a, a logical perspective, but your family was was still in and involved in Ecuador and mission work. I mean, really, your whole life. You know, one of the other widows, Barbara Udarian, um, her her parents said, "Barbara, bring the kids." They had two children. Said, "Bring the kids and come home, and we'll take care of you." And Barbara answered them, and he said, uh, "You know." Um, God's call wasn't just to Roger to be a missionary, it was to me. And she said, if God, if God, um, you know, moves me to come back to the States, I'd be happy to, but until then, I'm going to stay here where he called me. And uh, actually, all four of the five women stayed in Ecuador. The only one, um, Olive Fleming, who had no children, um, the other four widows asked her to come back to the States because there was just, people were just clamoring for information. They wanted to know, why would you go and why would you stay and why would you love the people that and care for the people that killed your husbands? And, um, you know, that's that story still happens today. You know, Jesse and Dewey, uh, USA Today, um, Journalist, when we were Minkai and I were traveling with Stephen Curtis Chapman, uh, we did s- concerts with him in sixty-five cities. We talked, Minkai and I talked. We we didn't do much singing, although Minkai would chant with Steve at the end of each concert. But um, um, this man called me and he said, um, "Is it true that your father was killed by?" violent people, um, warriors down in the Amazon jungle. And I said, yes, sir, that's true. And he said, um, now you're traveling with a with a tribesman now, but he's not one of that tribe, is he? And I said, uh, yes, sir, he is. And he said, but he's not one of them, is he? And I said, one of who? And he said, one of the men that killed your father. And I said, yes, sir, he is. And he said, you're traveling together. You don't share a room, do you? And I said, yeah, we have to. I mean, Kai doesn't know how to get in the room. He doesn't know how to use the bathroom stuff because it changes in every motel. And and uh, he said, I just don't understand that. How could you share a room with the man who killed your father? And I said, well, you know, that was only the first chapter. And finally he said, uh, but you know, somebody told me that you love him. And I said, I do. And he just reacted, I mean, violently. This this journalist, he said, no, no, how could you love the man? That's morbid. That That's, un, that's unnatural. How could you love the man who killed your father? And I said, well, my, my children call him Mama. They call him Grandfather. Um, we're part of the same family, and I can't tell you how it happened. I said, how did you forgive him? That's that's probably the question I get most often. And the truth is I never did forgive him. Um, you know, to forgive somebody, you don't forgive somebody who hasn't wronged you. And um, after Dad was killed, I mean, Dad knew and his friends knew that there was a chance they'd be killed. They had guns. They could have defended themselves um, against spears. but uh, So Dad was willing. He thought that they were special enough. And then every night when we'd get together for family devotions, which was a hard time for me because it was so obvious Dad wasn't there, my mom would pray for those people. And then a couple of years later, my Aunt Rachel came and visited us, came out of the jungles to the edge of the jungles and told us that she was going to go in and live with the Waurani. She'd had an invitation, and I thought, what is wrong with you adults? They killed my dad and Uncle Roger and Pete and Ed and Jim. They're certainly going to kill you. But I saw that my aunt was really excited about it. And um, even as a little boy, I knew this is not natural. And then when I went out and Minkai uh, took me under his wing and started teaching me, the things that I should have known by then if I was Waurani. 
then I realized he loved me and was willing to teach me the skills that in their culture he had to expect I would use one day to kill him and avenge my father's killing. So uh, it's like the Bible. It says, um, you know, God loved us while we were still weak. God mm -hmm. loved us while we were still sinners uh, and sent his son to die for us. Um, it isn't all that unusual. But f as far as forgiveness, I, seeing the example of my dad, my mom, my aunt, um, it never occurred to me to forgive them. Well, um, yeah, that's uh, that's powerful, and that's um, yeah. I think that when you think about one of the things John Piper talks about, when you go, <clears throat> the world's attention is drawn to things that are radical, not the normal, and so you know that is certainly um, you know just thinking about you know wow, you know you would. This is there's a there's a big story there's something mm -hmm. something bigger here, of you know that understanding you know God's love God's forgiveness which allows you to extend that to others you know that I think about the you know, the parable of unmerciful servant you know understanding our debt before God right. and being able to forgive others and um, yeah just you know even even Steve you know Father forgive them for they know not what they do you know that. Um, that was us, you know, that was, you know, you're talking about Romans 5, you know, that we were God's enemies, he loved us even then. So understand ourselves correctly. You know, there's that old saying, hurt people, hurt people. I think the corollary to that is forgiven people. I mean, if we, if we really understand that even, the, even just calling somebody stupid is, um, makes us, worthy of God rejecting us. But um, if we really understand, and, and as I've learned what God has forgiven me of, I think the corollary to hurt people hurt people is forgiven people forgive people. Mm 